Hey YouTube, A Stu here. Between life and not having a lot of content to really review, uh, I've been on a little hiatus, but uh, I'm back. I'm here to review the Chromebook Plus and tell you why I like it. So for starters, the reason why I got the Plus as opposed to the Pro is because uh, after reading up on it, I realized that the ARM processor in the Plus version was optimized to run Android apps or Android apps were being optimized to be ran on an ARM processor. So in knowing that, I was like, I'm not exactly sure how well the apps will be optimized to run on an Intel processor, an Intel M3. So I was like, it makes sense to get the ARM processor. If you're trying to get work done, you, you're most likely going to use the apps in the App Store that we now have access to on Chromebooks and use those to get things done and be productive. So I did that and figured I'd save myself a hundred bucks. So far I like it. I haven't really had much issues with lag. Only one switch in between uh, screens, but I'll show you guys that later. Other than that, the apps run great. They run smooth. There's no hiccups. And everything is scaled properly. Nothing looks weird and um, stretched. So, so far I've had a pleasant experience with the different apps I've downloaded. Uh, okay, so things I like about this. PC or Chromebook. For one, I like the screen. The screen is a Quad HD display, uh, 2400 by 1600 uh, resolution, and the screen is also a 3 to aspect ratio. Uh, that Having that aspect ratio makes it ideal for holding it in both uh, landscape and portrait mode. Uh, it feels uh, more natural to hold as opposed to some of these other uh, two-in-ones, their aspect ratio makes it a little bit more weird. Um, other things I like about this device is the 360 hinge. Other than laptop mode, I like using uh, the Chromebook in stand mode. I love the fact that the Play Store is now on Chromebooks. That's awesome because before trying to use the web apps, I mean they worked, but it's not as good as having an app downloaded and using it the way you're used to using your Android device like phones and tablets. So it definitely completes the experience. Other thing I like about this physically, this uh, Chromebook is thin. It makes it ideal for holding it when it's in tablet mode. Um, other than that, I do really like the non S Pen digitizer. Uh, it writes well. I use it in OneNote and I also use it in Google Keep. I'm really glad that those two support handwriting on this device. I don't use them so often, but when I do, they work well. Battery life is really good. I'm getting around nine hours of productivity. I get through my day. I'm able to get home without needing my charger. Um, I really like the gestures on the touchpad. This is my first actual experience with a Chromebook, so it was nice to use the different gestures on the touchpad to get stuff done, which I will demonstrate in a little bit as well. Uh, I like the fact that there's two USB Type-C ports, so it gives you an option of what side to charge it on. I know that's not a huge deal, but it's definitely good. And also, if you want to um, download files while you're charging, you don't have to plug out, uh, plug the charger out to transfer files. So it's nice to have those two there. And now for the cons. Uh, the cons, there's not many, but uh, a lot of them are subjective things that. I have an issue with, most people might not have an issue with, but I'm just putting them out there anyway. Um, for one, it feels a little heavy if you want to consider it an actual tablet. It's not horrible, and yes, I understand this is a two-in-one device and there's a whole keyboard attached. Uh, it's not horrible if you're going to be holding it for short periods of time, um, which in when I get in situations where I would want to hold it as a tablet, that's usually when I use it in stand mode. So I guess that's why that's also uh, the favorite, my favorite way of using it. Other things about that, uh, about the uh, Chromebook, I do. I'm in school, and sometimes I copy and paste in OneNote uh, for uh, to take notes. So when I copy and paste on a Windows PC, I'm able to keep source formatting. So if there's charts or bullet points it pays the way it looked uh, when I copied it. But on a Chromebook, I do I haven't had that option, so if I paste in OneNote, it, it pastes in plain text. There's no bullet points, there's no charts, it just prints the words and that's it. So that's a little annoying, but it's not something I'm going to be using forever, just putting it out there. Uh, another thing I don't like, not that it's Google or Samsung's fault, is that Word has not 
um, completed their app for Ford yet. It's not compatible with the device yet, which is kind of annoying. I'm able to use Word online in the browser, and that's fine. It's just not the same experience. But it works in the meantime uh, while we're waiting for that. Another thing I do not like is the back button. It's a little small, so then sometimes I'm hitting the button next to it or I'm missing it all together. I'll show you that in a little bit when we take a look at the keyboard. And one last thing everybody's been complaining about, no backlight. I've realized that in using it in the dark, if your screen is bright enough, you're still able to see your keyboard and you don't have to crank the brightness up to, you know, on high. You can have it about uh, halfway brightness or a little less than that. You should still be able to see your keyboard. Is it ideal? No. But um, it works. You're still able to see it. It's not like my Lenovo because if I don't turn the backlight on in dark, I can't see those keys at all. So that is the upside. Okay, so I picked up this Chromebook from my local Best Buy. This is the box it came in. And in this box came this box which housed the charger. The charger is uh, connected to the power brick. Uh, it's not like a USB charger that you're used to getting with uh, tablets and phones. The voltage is different, so I'm assuming that's why they uh, attached it so not to have any issues with people attaching the wrong power brick. So here I have lined up my Yoga 900, the Chromebook, and my Surface 3. Uh, the aspect ratio of the Yoga 900 I believe is 16 by 9 and the Surface and the Chromebook are both 3 by 2. I just lined them up so you guys could get a size comparison. Uh, the screen on this is 13.3, Chromebook 12.2, and the Surface is 10.8. And I have them lined up evenly so you guys can see how much space, what difference there is between uh, devices. Okay, so here we have the Chromebook. You can see how incredibly thin it is. You have the digitizer pen, USB Type-C port, power button, and the volume rocker. On this side of the device, you have another USB-C port, as well as a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. Real quick, I'll show you what the digitizer looks like. It looks like the S Pen, except it does not have the button. So here's the Chromebook in all its glory. The screen is beautiful. So real quick I just wanted to show you the feature I was talking about with um, opening up all your windows. Use three fingers on the touchpad, you drag down, it opens them all, go sorry, go back up. See the lag that I was talking about earlier? That's as worse as it gets though. As far as actually using any of the apps they are very responsive, they work the way you expect it to. And speaking of the Galaxy S8, I will be waiting for mine in the mail and I'll be doing videos on that uh, in the near future. In any event, I just wanted to show you some of the other touchpad features in Chrome. You use three fingers and you swipe through the tabs. Other than that, working with this Chromebook is fairly easy. Stand mode. Just showing you that's the other way I use it. You can also use it in tent mode and auto rotate pretty much works all the time pretty flawlessly. Luckily it didn't act up during the video. But yeah, that's it for the Chromebook. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I will be seeing you guys soon.